hello all of you today i will give the demonstration of the first cervical vertebrae this is also known as the atlas and it looks like a ring it is also known as the atypical cervical vertebrae because it lacks the features of a typical uh, cervical vertebrae it neither has a body nor a spine this is a typical cervical vertebrae there are total seven cervical vertebrae are there and this is a typical cervical vertebrae it has a body this is the body and it has a bifid spine and this vertebrae this is our first number vertebrae this neither has a body nor a spine so it's me not the body hoti hai nice it's me spine hota hai that's why this is the atypical vertebrae and the name of this vertebrae is atlas this vertebrae has arch this is the arch and this is the second arch of this vertebrae this is the anatomical position of the vertebrae so this is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect so this arch is the anterior arch and this longer arch is the posterior arch so this is anterior arch and this arch is making the two fifth of this vertebrae this is the posterior arch so this arch is comparatively longer than the anterior arch and then we have the two lateral masses present in this vertebrae and there are two transverse processes are present in this vertebrae so total features of this vertebrae are anterior arch this is the anterior arch which is present anteriorly and this is the posterior arch these are the two lateral masses and these are the transverse process this anterior arch is having anterior tubercle this is the anterior tubercle and one oval facet posteriorly this oval facet will articulate with the second cervical vertebrae that is known as the dense sorry that is known as the axis it articulate with the dense part of the second cervical vertebrae so here is the articulation of this oval facet which is present on the posterior aspect of the anterior arch with the dense or the odontoid process of the axis vertebrae so here is the articulation of the oval facet with the dense and this is the anterior tubercle which gives attachment to a ligament and that is the anterior longitudinal ligament this is the posterior arch this arch also have a tubercle this is the posterior tubercle yahan wale tubercle ko anterior tubercle bolte hain yahan wale tubercle ko posterior tubercle bolte hain this is the upper surface of the posterior arch this is the inferior surface or the inferior border of the posterior arch and this upper surface of the posterior arch is having a groove so this groove is present on the both side of this posterior arch so the features of the posterior arch are a tubercle is present posteriorly that is the posterior tubercle and the groove on both side and this lateral mass this is having superior articular facet and inferior articular facet and how we can differentiate between the superior articular and the inferior articular facet the superior articular facet is elongated and concave and this inferior articular facet is circular or more flat so this is the differentiation between the superior and the inferior articular facet we will point out the superior articular facet superiorly and the inferior articular facet inferiorly the superior articular facet articulates with the occipital condyles present on the occipital bone and makes a joint that is the atlanto occipital joint so here i am showing you the formation of the atlanto occipital joint these are the two occipital condyle and there is a joint between the superior articular facet and the occipital condyle so there is a formation of the atlanto occipital joint and to the inferior side we have the inferior articular facet these inferior articular facet will articulate with the axis vertebrae so here we have the axis vertebrae and these are the articular facet present on the superior aspect of the axis so there is a joint formation between the facet of the axis and the inferior articular facet of the atlas and this joint is known as the atlanto axial joint so we have two joint one is the atlanto occipital joint and inferiorly we have the atlanto axial joint and then when we when uh, we are moving to the medial side of the lateral mass there is again a tubercle to the both side this tubercle and this tubercle there is a attachment of a ligament that is the transverse ligament of the atlas which bridge this part and it also prevent the posterior displacement of this dense here is the articulation of this dense with the oval facet and there then there is a attachment of the transverse ligament here in the tubercles which are present on the lateral mass so this transverse ligament will prevent the posterior displacement of the dense तो ये यहीं पे अटैच रहेगा ये पोस्टीरियरली डिस्प्लेस नहीं होएगा बिकॉज ऑफ द अटैचमेंट ऑफ द ट्रांसवर्स लेगामेंट टू द ट्यूबर्कल्स ऑफ द लिटरल मास सो दिस लिटरल मास इज हैविंग द सुपीरियर आर्टिकुलर फेसेट एंड इन्फीरियर आर्टिकुलर फेसेट एंड द 
tubercles so one tubercle we have to the anterior side anterior tubercle two tubercles on the lateral mass and one tubercle to the posterior arch and all of the tubercles are giving attachment to the ligament here we have the anterior longitudinal ligament here we have the transverse ligament and here to the back side we have the ligamentum nuque we have the attachment of the ligament nuque so all of the tubercles are giving attachment to the ligament and the muscles which are attached to this atlas is here to each side of this anterior longitudinal ligament we have the fibers of the longus coli muscle yaha pe we have the fibers of the longus coli muscle and to the back side on each side of the posterior tubercle we have the fibers of the rectus capitis posterior minor muscle this part is giving origin to the rectus capitis posterior minor muscle and this upper surface of the posterior arch the upper border of the posterior arch it gives the attachment to the posterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane and the anterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane is attached to the upper border of the anterior arch this is the upper border of anterior arch this is the upper border of posterior arch here the attachment is of anterior part of atlanto occipital membrane when there is a formation of the joint this part will give the attachment to the anterior part of atlanto occipital membrane this membrane will fill the excess gap which is present between the occipital bone and the atlas bone and the posterior part is giving attachment to the posterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane and the lower down this lower border is giving the attachment to a ligament that is the ligament flava and that ligament flava will fill the gap will fill the excess gap between the axis and the atlas vertebrae so anteriorly we have the anterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane here we have the posterior part of atlanto occipital membrane then we have the ligament nuque and here to each side we have the ligament flava that is filling the excess gap between the atlas and axis and then this groove it is for the vertebral artery and the first cervical nerve this groove is related to the vertebral artery third part of vertebral artery and the first cervical nerve and this transverse process this is giving attachment to the so many of the muscles we will discuss one by one and this part this is the anterior part of the lateral mass this is the lateral mass this is the anterior part of the lateral mass or the anterior surface of the lateral mass this part is giving attachment or origin to the rectus capitis anterior muscle when we will move lateral to this side this is the uh, part of the transverse process and this is the upper surface of the transverse process so upper surface anteriorly will give attachment to the rectus capitis lateralis muscle here we have the origin of the rectus capitis anterior muscle and here we have the origin of the rectus capitis lateralis muscle and this is the upper surface posteriorly it gives attachment to the superior oblique muscle upper surface anteriorly rectus capitis anterior upper surface posteriorly it gives attachment to the superior oblique muscle and this is the lateral margin of the transverse process and this is the tip of the transverse process and this lateral margin of the transverse process gives origin to the levator scapuli muscle l4 levator scapuli l4 the lateral margin so this lateral margin gives attachment to the levator scapuli muscle and this part of the tip looks like the posterior tubercle of the transverse process because uh, when we look at the typical uh, cervical vertebrae we have the anterior tubercle and the posterior tubercle so this part of the transverse process looks like the it is similar to the posterior tubercle which is present in a typical cervical vertebrae so this part will give attachment to two muscles these are the scalenus medius and the splenius cervicis muscle this lateral margin is giving attachment or origin to the levator scapuli and only this part will give the slips to the uh, the slips of the splenius cervicis and the scalenus medius arises from the posterior tubercle of the transverse process this was the posterior tubercle of the posterior arch and this is the posterior tubercle of the transverse process when we move to the lower side of the tip and this tip lower side of the tip it gives origin to the inferior oblique muscle so total muscles which are attached to this transverse process all are origin these are rectus capitis anterior here superior oblique here levator scapuli here and scalenus medius and splenius cervicis here and the inferior oblique and the ligaments are anterior longitudinal ligament this ligament also attaches to the lower border of this anterior arch then we have the membrane anterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane posterior side posterior part of the atlanto occipital membrane ligament nuque ligament flava and this groove is for vertebral artery and first cervical nerve here is the transverse ligament 
and now i am coming to the ossification of this atlas vertebrae total we have three center for the ossification of this vertebrae the two center for each of the lateral mass one center for uh, this half one center for this half along with the half of the posterior arch so total we have two centers for the lateral mass and half of the posterior arch these centers appear during the seventh week of the intrauterine life and these centers fuses with each other at about 3 years of the life so center we uh, we are having for the anterior arch so here we have the third center which appear at about first year of the life and fuse fuses with the rest of the lateral mass at about 7 year of the life so this is all about the atlas vertebrae thank you